another wet, miserable day. Morgan's just taking some planings up the road. I'm on the Merlot. There's a Merlot there, and then there's another Merlot. You can't see, it's just gone around the corner over there, getting ready for the chipper. James is here with his dinner, which is the same as the, the Ashbrook's one. I'm going to put the bucket brush on and brush the yard because it's just this film all over it that's getting muddy. So I'm going to put the rotary brush on, I think, when I can find it. Last time I had it was in Wellbrook. Put it down there. Yeah, there it is. That'll do. Tom Pemberton's still not finished his brush, probably a year now, is it? Got the right fittings on this now. It's got a male on the front and a female on the back. Same as this. So we'll clip that on. I'm just going to get a pair of gloves. You going for fuel? No, no, I'm paying you. Dave's here. He's going to do some chipping today. Not a massive pile today. Shouldn't take him too long, hopefully. Right, let's put this brush on. Put that onto the middle, the holder. There we go. Easy. Parcel just arrived from Merlot by the looks of things. It's a little tiny baby grow. Congratulations. And then a personal care box, whatever's in that. I'll open that later in the house. But thank you, Merlo. I can actually thank them in person in a bit because I think they're on the way today. Can you see which bit I've done? I think it's starting to look better because it's so wet you're just chasing it a little bit at the moment but at least it looks yellowy be white in color over there now the concrete the merlot's just made a tip merlot the chip has just made a tinkle as a load bind has just gone through it but it's only not one too far luckily and now we'll put the euro millions on tonight yeah i tried on saturday but it didn't win it. <laughs> there it is one minute early it's a baby, baby Merlot that runs off electric. It's weird, you can't even hear it moving. Hey, it only just fits on them ramps, doesn't it? Tow the header with it as well. This is the charger and it's come with a selection of plugs, so I was gonna use that one, but then that means that I'll have to unplug the roller shutter door in the shed I was gonna use it, and then I won't be able to shut the door, so I'm not gonna use that plug. That's too big. So I've got this one here off the old ramp. So I'll put that one on and we'll put the charge then in the workshop. Hey, we're running on electric. It's not four wheel steer, so it takes a little bit of getting used to. Anyway, I'm gonna take the charge around to the workshop. So I'm just gonna drop the bucket off, which um, to be fair, I need two hands for, because I'm gonna press that at the same time as that. We go buckets off. Now, I'll go and get the pallet forks and the charger. It's got a heated front screen as well, look. Where's the windscreen? Oh, there's a windscreen wiper switch. Right, that's good. <laughs> what I will say though, the handbrake switch is hidden behind the key. Better off there. I'm sure, it's quite easy to swap. Right. Yeah, I'll take the charger out of the workshop now. Pallet porks are massive, they're like dead tall somehow. 
click them back on. There you go. I don't know whether you saw it a minute ago, but did. Oh, look at that. It's got a blue light on the back when you back up, so it's reflecting off the baler. The, the charge is actually only tiny in that box, but you can have it wall mounted or you can have it in a box. So if you've got different sites, different yards, you can move it around quite easily and it's protected. Let's just go forwards now, like that. Off we go. Rob's washing the van. He's going to drive the traffic management company around later, the route for the track to run so that they can make some notes. I've got a meeting with ADAS about some SFI stuff that we're looking at doing. It's dead quiet, isn't it? Because obviously you've got no engine running. Caveman meets the future. Barney Rubble. Right, I'm in the office this afternoon doing some stuff on the computer, so we're going to have a quick look around this. It's basically only two wheel steer, so the other one's a four wheel steer, but it steers from the back. It's dead simple though. You've got an electric motor there that powers a hydraulic pump, and you've got a valve button. Gas strut's too weak, isn't it? Has it gone funny? All the water sat on the top, maybe, no? Um, yeah, hydraulic pump there, valve block, just like a normal one. And then you can see down there, that's another electric motor driving into the back axle. So it's four wheel drive, but only two wheel steer. And obviously you must have another motor at the front to drive them front wheels. This under here now is where you plug it in to charge it. So you unplug that, plug the charger into there, and then this, this is quite clever. So it'll do about eight hours on a battery. But if you open that up, if you really want, you can get it with two batteries. So like factories and stuff, if you work them on shift, so you've got someone doing it in the day and someone doing it at night, rather than leave it on charge and have two, you put your pump truck under here, you undo that plug, and you pull out that battery, just push another one in, and it, you can basically swap the batteries in the time it takes you to fill one up with diesel. And obviously you've got zero emissions as well. So let's just clip that in there. Which is pretty clever. There are your inverters and fuses, so that's covered by that plastic. The batteries are lead, now the reason the lead is apparently is the cheaper to replace so what they didn't want to do is build a machine that had like lithium batteries that down the line the batteries cost more than the machine and it meant the resale was rubbish was leads cheaper to replace it's more recyclable and you don't have to mine it as as heavily as you as your lithium batteries do so it's kind of more sustainable Yes, it's heavier, which doesn't really work in a car because you're carrying extra weight. But in a telehandler, you want weight. You need weight to move weight. So the idea is the batteries live underneath like an L shape. It just pulls out. You slot a new battery in. Um, what else has it got? So the carriage, very similar to the other Merlots, just smaller. It'll lift two and a half ton to five meters and 90 is the kilowatt so it's about 60 horsepower it isn't a full-size merlot cab it's a bit smaller i'm not gonna lie i think the seats the seat looks terrible it'd be better with one like an, with a nice cushion but i suppose if you leave the door open and rain blows in you can dry it off quicker it's probably very similar to a normal forklift the dashboard is changing so this is the dashboard at the moment and it tells you your power output and then you've got You've got different modes. So you've got like high power, you've got normal power, and then you've got eco. And that's just basically how fast everything responds and the top speed. If you have it in eco, the battery will last a lot longer than it will in high. And and that's sort of like normal mode. Handbrake is hidden. I showed you that before. That would be better there. Forwards and backwards is on here as well as on the joystick there. Just like there are other ones. It's got a heater, which must be electric, obviously, because there's no engine pumping any hot water around. And then that front windscreen apparently is heated. Although I can't see, normally you can see lines in a windscreen when it's heated, but I can't see them in there. Unless that is just to turn them ones on perhaps, I don't know. Little phone holder there. Um, 
yeah so the cab obviously is a lot smaller but it doesn't doesn't particularly feel it obviously you've got window up there as well for when you're going high now what you can do with this which is a shame it's they've not brought it so you can put a battery a battery a basket on it which will plug into there and then you can drive it from the basket so you know how we have obviously a merlot and a jury picker and the jury picker you can obviously drive from from the basket so it's like a one-man job if you're doing any repair maintenance and stuff like that well that's what you can do with this you can have one of these with its own basket and you're perfectly legal then to use it as a as a cherry picker where you can it's so quiet isn't it? where you can say click it on here climb in go up down it'll that so that goes to five meters but if you imagine person's kind of two meters high so you can work quite easily on six seven meters and control it from the basket even backwards and forwards from the basket not just up and down you can go backwards and forwards and steer it so if you were thinking of one i think for, i think it's about seven grand option to have the basket and all the bits of it i mean you can't buy a cherry picker for seven grand can you but i i think it's brilliant so if you are a farm with like a mastered forklift by swapping it to one end means you can unload wagons from one side not two then you put that basket on it apparently the running costs are like nearly a third of what it cost in diesel if you're buying your electric right if you've got solar you're even better off i think it's a it's a bloody good option really isn't it it's actually got led lights on it i suppose it makes sense to have complete led lights because there's far less power requirement from an led light so your batteries would last a lot longer by not flattening it oh yeah it's got a little it's got a little toolbox here as well it's quite handy put your chains and straps in there it's dead small though it's like i don't know what would it be five foot wide maybe i think there's 28 sevens here that's probably about six foot wide what we really need to do is take the bucket off them and park them next to each other but probably do that tomorrow but yeah there we go that is the merlot electric merlot e-worker i've left the pallet forks in the air haven't i Drop them down i think we've got it till next week to have a good play with we've only got the pallet forks and bucket so it's a bit of a shame really that it's not got the basket because it would have been nice to play with the basket but um obviously oop, that was a bit quick because i did it with my left hand yeah obviously They've got so many demonstrators that they've got to move around the country for people to try. But we'll see how we get on with it in a week. Guy from the traffic management company's here, so him and Rob are going to drive the route for the tractor run now, make some notes. Steve's here from ADAS, so we're going to go and look at some of this SFI stuff and see what we can do. I've still been meeting, I've just been resetting the boiler, it's gone off. Ben's here for his chip. Little seven. 8.30 update, Morgan's nearly got the head off, but we think it might not be the gasket, because what was it, pressurising the sump oil? We're pressurising the sump oil, it's chucking out the breather. So we think it could be the piston rings, we don't know. We'll take the head off and then we'll know a bit more, so. Yeah, but it opens wide though, doesn't it? It's like, like a big, um, what's that plane that opens up at the front? There's a quiz question. That's what it looks like. We've gone from having a massive birthday bumper over the last week or so to like only a few names today. So we've got Al Beatty's on there, Sandy Stewart, New Tail is 50, Adrian Halliwell on there, and Keith Maxey is on there. £50,801. Yeah, it's, it's amazing, really. They, they've, they've gone from like 14 some days to down to only four. And I think it was there only three yesterday. So happy birthday, everyone on there. Anyway, I'm going to end the video today in the daylight. So thanks for watching i hope you've enjoyed it don't forget the quiz question and i'll see you all tomorrow one last thing thanks to chris and danny for sending that as well just off to a quick meeting but before i forget 
the NFU are calling for some signatures for an open letter to, to basically make the EU stand up and realise that they need to start dredging and looking after the river infrastructure. So there's a link below this video. If anyone wants to go and log on and fill it in, that would be amazing.